We're going to go into some music and then we'll be back talking to uh, Pete and Nick from Appy, Appy. Yeah. which we've got some, a few laughs there, but also what actually oh. happened on the night. There were so many laughs during that interview. <laughs> yeah, my, my ribs are still hurting. <laughs> is that from the laughs? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you went anyway, there. You went there. Pete is You're... mean on an arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> You're on Ghost of Oz on a live 90.5. And welcome back to Ghost of Oz on a live 90.5. We're here with the girls from Appy. Now, as you've heard throughout the course of the night, we'll be talking about a spirit level crossover that we did with these lovely ladies and Don. Now, girls, we've Hi. got Pete and Welcome Nikki. to the show. Again. Hi. Hey. Yes. Now, a couple of questions can we shoot by you guys before we get into the nitty gritty? For sure. Okay. Now, uh, first of all, like, how did Appy get involved with the Casula Powerhouse? It's not your sort of typical location. No, well, actually, we were scouting on the internet looking for venues that we could approach about doing an investigation. And I found this really incredible um, report on a forum for, I don't know what they called, Skyline Cars. <laughs> Some, <laughs> Some car forum. Yeah, car, and it was a security guard, and he was talking about all the stuff he's had happen to him. And I thought, oh, hell, why not? So I did a proposal and I sent it off. And it took a couple of months toing and froing mm -hmm. with the business manager, and eventually they had us in for an investigation. And then they asked us to come back with a proposal to do tours and paranormal investigation nights. Wow. So, so yeah. So resistance does pay off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just keep hounding and harassing. <laughs> uh, one thing I have sort of thought it was a little bit interesting, especially doing a lot of the tours that we do and hanging around with the groups that we hang around with, have you found that doing the tours over the course of the months that you guys have been doing it and will continue to do, do you think the activity will vary from tour to tour or will, has it stayed fairly consistent? On the actual investigation night that we did, there were certain areas that we couldn't get into. So it was interesting bringing different groups through and then we had a few people experience different things in those rooms that we've included those in the tours. But it's funny that new people come through, they have the same experience and we've also had people get the same vision of a little girl in the area but she always looks the same so it's good validation for us knowing that okay these spirits are around but there's a, there are some new things that come along yeah most most of the hauntings that are there do you think it's more residual or more intelligent or oh, with Casula, i would probably say more residual yeah i would say it's def probably about a 70 30 split okay. with 70 being residual mm. okay well what do you think all this energy and chaos comes from for, <laughs> for a fairly oddball location. When you picture Casula Powerhouse, it sits smack bang in the middle of the railway station and the Georges River. So you've got a lot of energy on both sides. Of a the, rock and a scary place. That's mm -hmm. it. Sounds like my house. <laughs> we've, we've found newspaper articles dating back to the turn of the century um, for, from deaths of both the railway station mm. and the river. So right there in that area so um we th we attribute a lot of the things that people see or experience to those deaths as well as the deaths that would happen in such a sweaty high powered place as a power station well but also the land itself there was an aboriginal massacre many 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 years ago so there's a lot of energy there they've had smoking ceremonies and everything to try and clear that energy but it's not budging not mm -hmm. budging no sounds like a couple of alex's drinking stains <laughs> <laughs> But Just drinking. <laughs> <laughs> he has been reading Fifty Shades of Grey, I have noticed. <laughs> Heaven help you. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, oh. All right, we're getting off track, but I mean, the whole course of the show is about the spirit level and the crossover that we did with you guys and Don. Um, um, nothing to do with Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> yet. Yet. <laughs> Actually, I think we're going to use that in a trigger object. <laughs> well, I tried that. <laughs> yes. Any results? No, no. Oh, hang on, did I? I don't know. I can just see a bunch of ghosts sitting there with a cigarette going, yeah, keep going. <laughs> I was reading Fifty Shades of Grey when we were doing our lone vigils at Maitland. Wow. That's what I was reading out. <laughs> that wasn't a trigger. You are just catching up on yeah. reading. Yeah, that's true. I was <laughs> liking the sound of my own voice reading it. <laughs> All right. I was a little Very bit worried because I knew Glenn was kind of outside. <laughs> what are you doing? A lone vigil. <laughs> Give me five. <laughs> Oh, God, God. Right, now, the main purpose of the show is the crossover that we did with Don and the Spirit Level and you guys, and we actually thought it was really quite interesting just watching how all this comes together. But how did, um, how did Spirit Level 
come around with you guys? Uh, Don approached us last year in 2011. We've worked with him a few times beforehand and it just seemed like an ideal opportunity to have a crossover with you guys and with Don and us. Uh, we had some really interesting stuff happen to us during the course of the night. Hey, listeners will probably hear about it a little bit later on. But what's probably been the worst or even the best experience that you guys have had at the powerhouse? Because I'm th I haven't had that much happen to me, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking about what's happened to other people. Yeah, mm. big little Kev. Little Kev Steph. Little Kev. The, girl, the lady with the little girl. I'll tell you one thing. We were, as you know, because you've attended one of our ghost tours, we were lining up, lining up, waiting for everyone to arrive, and we are just standing in the foyer downstairs, and a lady came up to us and she said, <laughs> she said, what's the age group for the tours here? And Nick said 14. And she said, oh, so is there a staff member's child or something here? And we were like, no. And she said, there's a little girl up there and she keeps poking her head over the railing looking at us. And she, she was honestly asking us because she was wondering why there was a little kid running around. Wow. No, no kid, no kid. <laughs> 